guns. They're a very powerful thing in video games. Their look, sound, and animations can make you feel very powerful. For this video, I want to focus on the different guns and weapons introduced in Valve games. Since they have a lot of experience, and design some of the most iconic weapons, the weapons in their games just feel really good to use. Speaking of iconic weapons, let's briefly talk about this bad boy, the gravity gun. In a negative reviews video for Half-Life 2, I mentioned that the guns can feel a bit tame, specifically with how weak the gunshots sound. Now with this one though, the blast sounds so powerful. This weapon can be very situational in combat, but when it's the right time to use it, then you know it'll cause havoc. From the competitors of Black Mesa, Aperture Science came out with something that can destroy the time-space continuum as we know it, the portal gun. It's only used for puzzles, but the idea of it can be limitless. The way you can use it to move the turrets, in-game, and changing your position shows how cool it could be for player versus player games. I think there's potential here. I'm not the only one that thought of using the portal gun this year. In 2019, Indie Studio 1047 Games released Splitgate, an arena shooter that takes inspirations from games like Quake, Halo, and Portal. I haven't played this game a lot, and it doesn't look like I will since it was announced a few months ago that the servers are shutting down, but it does show how far this idea can go. But Valve did something else with this gun, something truly ahead of its time. They turned the portal gun into a friend. Now I can talk with GLaDOS the same way I talk with my favorite Twitch streamers. First popularized in Quake, rocket jumping is when you use the knockback from explosives to your advantage, getting huge bursts of speed and height, which can give you lots of advantages, whether it's positioning, reaching out of bound areas, or just getting somewhere quicker. You can do this in many games, like with a Tau Cannon in Half-Life 1, and you can also use different explosives, like grenades, instead of a rocket launcher, albeit with a bit more difficulty. I'm speaking about the rocket launcher in Team Fortress 2 specifically because it's the first form of rocket jumping that I've been exposed to. And I'm just going to say it here, rocking jumping is fun. Yes, yes, I know, very controversial opinion, boo me all you want. But yes, rocking jumping is just straight up fun. Moving around to different maps at a high speed is such a thrill, even when just playing offline. The one drawback of rocket jumping is that it's really difficult, and it can take a lot of time to learn, and especially to master. But I think that's a good thing, and it makes it all the more satisfying when you nail that perfect jump. Oddly enough, if it were really easy to do, then I think it would lose its charm, and way less people will be interested in doing it. But if you want to do something easy, then you can scroll down a little bit and hit that subscribe button. While this isn't a gun, the laser trip mine in Half-Life 1 can be kind of broken. You can step on them, and use them as a staircase, which can let you get into areas that you shouldn't be able to. While this exploit doesn't have a lot of uses, the most well-known example of this is skipping the entire 7th chapter of the game. When I played the game for the first time as a 12 or 13 year old, I remember being really scared of the huge monster for that chapter and would try to do anything to avoid any sort of confrontation with it. I eventually came across this trick, and after trying it for what feels like decades, I wasn't able to get it. But in my defense, I wasn't able to do that because I was playing on the PlayStation 2 version, and using thumbsticks for precise movement isn't the best thing. Now, I've mentioned some of the most iconic weapons, along with a personal favorite, but these weapons are mostly known in a positive way, but not this gun. It's infamous, rather than famous. On a peaceful winter day in 2015, CSGO got an update that would drastically shake up the community. The R8 revolver was added. To say that this gun was broken is a complete understatement. There were two different firing modes. The primary shot, where it takes time to pull the trigger, and the secondary shot, which shoots instantly, but with the trade-off being that you lose accuracy. That's completely fine, but the broken thing about this is, well, when defusing a bomb in CSGO, you can use the right-click button to throw grenades and flashes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this gun was like the most accurate gun ever, and it also had the same damage as the strongest gun in the game, the AWP. The Iron Revolver, a gun which you could buy on the second round of the game for $850. For reference, the AWP, the gun I just mentioned, is worth $4,750. I remember playing matchmaking on the day it came out, and the sheer confusion and frustration my teammates were going through was spectacular. I'd like to give a few honorable mentions to weapons from other games. The Barrett 50 cal from the original Modern Warfare 2. I won't get into it, but the history of this gun is just amazing. Look it up if you have the time. But aside from that, the gun is beefy, it can consistently kill in one hit, and just listen to the gunshots. It's a classic. Ratchet & Clank isn't a series that I've spoken about on the channel yet, but it is hands down one of my favorites of all time. Throughout the series, there have been many great weapons, like Mr. Zircon for example, the killer robot that spouts one-liners every 15 seconds, or the Groovatron, 
a weapon that forces the enemies to dance, stopping their attacks. The Pixelizer Shotgun is another charming weapon, where it changes the enemies into 2D pixel art before meeting their demise. Now that I look at the script, I realize that a fair portion of it is just me gloating about how important sound design is. Did you know that an audio engineer for Black Mesa, a Half-Life 1 remake, used the sounds of his wife's wet ash cheeks for the game? I learned about this recently and I've had an irresistible urge to share this knowledge. And on that note, that's all for the video. If there are any weapons I've missed, then please let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a discussion. On the left, you'll see my most recent video. And on the right, you'll see another video from me that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching. Cheers.